Good morning, everybody. It's 9.38 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We're going to take a look at uh, a few things in this update. First of all, we're going to take a look at the uh, American model forecast for snowfall amounts over the next 10 days. And really, nothing major in the USA with the exception of the western half of the USA. We're going to see a lot of mountain snows in these areas. Um, so anywhere from, you know, in these mountains here in the west, you're going to see especially in the California mountains, possibly two feet of snow. Um, but if you go up here in Canada, in eastern, southeastern Canada, you might see a foot to 18 inches to 15 inches to 22 inches here. Um, but overall, we, we're in a pretty warm pattern here in the USA. Um, so it's going to be hard. And again, we have that positive NAO. So with the positive NAO, it's going to be hard to get that cold air locked in the eastern half of the USA or really for the whole whole country as a whole, because even with the negative NAO, you can still get like that feel of cold there in the western half of the USA. You can still kind of alter the feel of it uh, there in the west and kind of get cold there as well. Um, let's take a look at uh, our Storm Prediction Center. And uh, we haven't done this in a while, looking at our severe weather. Um, but really, there's not much to talk about here. Uh, day three, there's going to be a system coming onshore from the Pacific Ocean, and it's going to bring a marginal threat of severe weather, nothing too major, um, by uh, day three, which will be January um, 12th, and days four through eight. Again, a little risk there in the southeast, but overall, nothing major. Let's take a look at our um, NSET models just for the next 15 days, see what's going on here in uh, the model world, so to speak. And we're going to take a look at, just kind of fast forward through this, getting the overall glimpse and gist of it. So, again, really warm weather here for the east half, eastern half of the USA in the next um, relative day average, of course. And I'm talking about 70s, obviously. But um, anyway, some warm weather here. And then we have a little cold front come through with the, on the back end, some snow in Michigan, some lake effect coming off. Keep in mind, the lakes are not frozen, most of them. Um, right now, which is unusual for January 9th, so we might have uh, an increased threat for lake effect as we head into deeper parts of the winter into February, um, so that's always a threat on the table. And then we have another system come through January 17th, and again, just kind of pressing on in this pattern, um, we're just kind of seeing that it's really hard to get cold air um, in the USA because we have this positive NAO. As you can see here by um, day 15, January 25th, we have a lot of cold air just locked in um, Western Canada, which is awful for because you want to block there for uh, cold air to s stem south here in the USA. So not a good pattern at all. Um, let us take a look at the Jamstack weather model. Because again, we're going to see a El Nino, an El Nino develop for um, summer, I believe. Now let's take a look at that here. We're going to take a look at, um, uh, let's see, service, see a service anomaly. So here we go. Uh, Joe Bastardi is all on this too. You know, he's my um, um, my mentor in terms of, not literally, you know, I've never met him, but um, I, I look up to him in terms of his forecasts and all that. I think he's just the way his mind works, his, his analyses of the weather is great, uh, fantastic, I should say. And anyways, we're going to see an El Nino by J June through August of this year. This is what the model's predicting. So that would be very interesting because that's you're coming off a triple La Nina and you're seeing an El Nino, which there's a theory I believe Joe made that when you come off a double La Nina and you have an El Nino, a big winter follows. So we might not be in for a big winter next year, but I don't want to hype that up and get your hopes up yet. But uh, just put that out there, putting that out there, there's a that um, fact that we're seeing an El Nino after triple El Nino if this were to occur. Um, so let's take a look at our surface air temperature anomalies for the summer because I know a lot of you are hungry, so to speak, for summer, be summer because uh, we, we've, you know, we're in the heart of winter now. So I always get like that at least. So here's summer temperatures. Nothing too drastic. It's kind of your, your average summer that we've been seeing the past like decade you know a lot of warmth throughout the usa but nothing sticks out to me it's like oh this is going to be a record breaker summer so to speak and um but again a lot of warmth here over the el nino equatorial pacific um 
And then we have cooler air, air here over the South Pole, uh, which is kind of interesting. I, I, I don't know why that's occurring, but we'll have to keep our eyes glued on that. And last but not least, let, let's look at our teleconnections. Um, let's look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. Again, just not going negative. I mean, it is going negative in the next two weeks, but it's not like that um, forceful negative that we want for cold air, so it's not looking too hopeful. I'm just going to be real with you about that. Let's take a look at our PNA. Um, let's see if I can find it here. I always have trouble finding these because there's so many links. PNA is negative, but nothing major. It's kind of your average. So, so I'd say we're really in a zonal flow pattern, which means direct from west to east winds. Uh, the winds going straight from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean. And it's really not um, not much of a instable pattern where you're going to see a lot of big snowstorms, so to speak. So, again, um, we need to break this pattern, guys. I'll close with that. Um, we need to break this pattern if we want any hopes of major snows before the winter ends. I know a lot of you places are suffering right now from a snow deficit. Um, not Buffalo, of course, because they've seen, they've seen like a uh, 160 inches they've got their snow for the whole year just from the lake effect if that if they're probably above it you know they got 70 inches in november that in a day which is kind of incredible and then they got um 100 inches christmas day or something along the lines of that they got a lot so but anyways um yeah stay tuned to my updates make sure you like comment share subscribe i'm really trying to grow my channel so if you guys can give me a share or a like or Put me on the YouTube al al algorithm by doing so. That would be fantastic. And I hope you all have a great day. And God bless and take care. Peace.